Hello and welcome to this video where we're going to be taking a look at how you can use side chaining with effects other than the standard Steinberg compressor. So if you're not aware of how to do this, I'm just going to do a quick run through on this. I did a video on this a few years ago when side chaining was introduced in Cubase, but also we're going to look at how you can do this with third party plugins. It's not just compressors this applies to and also how you can tell whether or not a plugin actually supports side chaining, which is something that's useful if you don't want to spend fruitless hours trying to find a feature that doesn't exist. Another thing to bear in mind is as of Cubase 12, Elements, Artist and Pro all do do side chaining. This I think was something that was originally Cubase Pro only, but I can't find an older comparison chart, but definitely Cubase AI and Cubase LE, so those that are included with hardware, they do not do side chaining, so please don't waste your time looking for that kind of thing on there. I've had emails over the years of people trying to find this feature in a version of the program that just doesn't support it, so be aware of that as well. On screen, you can see the setup. It's pretty straightforward. We've got a pad. And a kick drum, which just plays every beat. Pretty straightforward, both fairly simple samples. Now what I want to do is I want to apply a compressor to the pad and then use the kick drum to turn the level of the pad down. So we get that pulsing effect, you've probably heard. This isn't the only application for side chaining. A more common use for me certainly is that I use it to just kind of automate what's happening in a mix, but the setup is exactly the same and this is nice and easy to demonstrate what's happening. So. As you can see, as an insert on the pad track, I've got a compressor already. So this is the Steinberg compressor. So this is the standard one you, you see demonstrated. And the typical thing to do is to turn on side chaining here. So what this actually does, this does two things. It makes the side chain send available in the mixer, but also in this particular case, it turns on side chaining in the plugin. So it tells the plugin, expect audio from a side chain input and stop listening to the audio that's passing through you to decide how much gain reduction to do. When we turn this on, that's what's happening here. So if I turn it off and just play this through, we can see we're getting a bit of gain reduction, not an enormous amount, but it is doing something. Now, if I turn sidechain on, and you see it's reset that helpfully, and we play it, you see it's doing nothing now. And that's because this compressor has been told there's audio coming on the sidechain input. That's what's going to control the gain reduction. So now we need to go to the track we need to send the audio from. So in this case, it's the kick. And we're going to go to the sends. Now I can either do it here, so we can do it as a normal send here. So we can just go to sends and pick side chains there. Or you can press this cog here, and then you can add your side chain source. But because we've got sends on the left hand side here, see what happens when I add the side chain source. So in this case, it's going to be kick. You see, it's just all it's doing is just setting up a send there, and that's it. Generally, if you're doing it with a kick, you'd put it on pre. Uh, you don't have to do it, but I'm going to put it on pre here purely because then I'll be able to turn this down and you'll be able to hear the effect of it. So your mileage can vary whether you need that, but you don't need to do that a lot of the time. And now when we press play, we can see the compressor's working. Probably need a faster release. And you can see that's pulsing away. And if I turn this channel down, oh, this is playing. You can hopefully hear now that's pulsing. Now, if I bring the threshold down to make it more pronounced, turn the ratio up to make it more pronounced, you get that really clear effect, but you'd, you'd want to tweak this, etc. But that's the basic setup and also how this actually works. So, this isn't actually doing anything you couldn't do in the mixer. It just makes it a bit more convenient. Now, let's look at the first of our third party compressors, which is going to be the Pro C2 from FabFilter. So, this is exactly the same setup. All I've done is I've bypassed the original compressor I was using, and here we've got Pro C2. So, here's the Pro C2, and here we can see we've got the activate side chaining button here. Now, if you turn this on and set it up in the way before, so we're going to add the kick as a side chain source, make it pre, and then we play it. 
you see it's not working in the way we were expecting. Okay, so I've still got this turned down, but because it's on a pre, we should still be able to have that effect. And it's not working because in this particular plugin, you need to turn external sidechain on. So by default, this will be hidden. You need to show that, and then you need to turn on external sidechain. So while Cubase knows this will take a sidechain and turning this on here does something, it doesn't tell the plugin, you must do this. You need to tell it yourself. So if we put that on external there, now you can see in here that that's working. And obviously you'd adjust this to taste, etc. but the, the basics of it are there. So with the Pro C2, you need to view the sidechain area and then turn it on. Otherwise it's not gonna work. Now they give you plenty of other options in terms of filtering, sidechain level, etc. So it's not just an on off thing, but that's the basics of getting that going on the C2. Next, we're gonna look at Soothe 2. So here you can see Soothe 2. Now for this particular setup to work, we need to go for some extreme settings, which you wouldn't normally use. This is just a demonstration of multiple plugins, etc. So rather than put a different setting that would work for this, I'm just gonna show you how to do this. It's pretty straightforward. It's much like the C2. So you need to turn on side chaining. And in this case, yeah, we'll add the kick again. Make sure that's turned right up in this case, because otherwise it's not gonna do anything. And then I've just got to set one band to an extreme setting here with real depth, etc. because this isn't really the way that Soothe would work. It's just to show you that the sidechain is active and we can play this back. And once we put the sidechain on, and we make sure our send is turned to pre. So you can hear that that is working here. Now, what's nice in this, we've got a sidechain cue, sidechain listen, so we can just put this on and you can hear the kick drum, which has been sent. And obviously in this case, visually, you can see this. So this isn't the kind of use you'd really want to use sidechaining in Soothe for, but it just shows the mechanics of how to set that up. Now let's look at another third party Dynamics processor, which in this case is Waves H Comp. So on screen, you can see the Waves H Comp. I do actually own this plugin, but it's running in demo mode because it's refusing to see the license which I've got on the USB stick. Uh, never mind, eh, Waves? So in the case of H Comp, it is like the Steinberg plugin. So if I just run it with sidechain turn on, we can see that it's, it's just compressing this normally. I've had to turn it up a fair bit so we get some actual effect out of it. But if we put the sidechain on and set it up again, just from the kick, Put it on pre, you'll see straight away this does work. So this is one of those plugins which, which works in the way the Steinberg one. Turning this on actually tells it to use the sidechain and it obeys that and just has that. So this will just work. So there's two main kinds of plugins here. There's the ones where they behave in the way the Steinberg compressor does when you turn sidechaining on with this button at the top. The plugin knows that and starts listening to the sidechain input, but there's also plugins like the C2 and Soothe, etc., where even when you turn the sidechain input on, you need to manually turn that on within the plugin. Your mileage will vary on what you have to do with that. And obviously, depending on what you're doing in the plugin, you'll need to change those settings as well. Those are the two things. Now, if you don't see this at the top, the plugin does not do side chaining in the traditional manner. There were workarounds with alternate audio inputs, etc., prior to side chain becoming a thing with the VST3 standard, I believe. But if it doesn't have this, basically either look up in the manual how you can do it manually, which most of the time you won't be able to, or the plugin doesn't do it. So let's look at one where that isn't the case and it doesn't have it. So on screen is Pulsar Smasher, which is a nice 1176 kind of uh, emulation with all the buttons pushed in. But you can see that the header of the plugin is different. If I get the H comp back up on screen, so H comp has got this activate sidechain button. Smasher does not. Okay, so it's missing from this area here. If you don't see that, 
generally the plugin doesn't do side chaining. I know there are some exceptions to that, but generally it's not going to work in the way you would expect. You can actually find this out from the plugin information window. So let's take a look at that now. So under the studio menu, we've got the VST plugin manager. So we can go there and you can see all of your plugins you've got installed. Now, the key thing is, if you press the I here, which isn't enabled by default, so by default, you'll probably see this or you might see the paths where your plugins can be located. But in this case, if we press the I, if you click on any of these plugins, you'll see some information about them. And the important thing is sidechain inputs. So if you see a zero here, the plugin does not have sidechain. If we click on compressor, we can see we've got one sidechain input. If we click on the Pro C2, we can see we've got one sidechain input, etc. Even with uh, an EQ such as frequency, it's got eight sidechain inputs because you can sidechain each band individually, etc. But if there's a zero, if you're not sure, you can see there we've got that. But if you're not sure if it does it, so if we look for the Pulsar Smasher. can see it's got a zero. If it's got zero there, you're not gonna be able to do side chaining with it. So hopefully that's covered everything you need to get your plugins up and running with side chaining, whether they are a Dynamics plugin or whether they're an EQ, etc. but also answered the mystery to why some of them don't have the controls and why you need to do different things in different plugins to get them working. I'm tempted to say, uh, read the manual, but I know not everybody does do that, not everybody wants to do that, and after all, if everyone did do that, I probably wouldn't have a job, so maybe I should uh, keep my mouth shut. Anyway, as ever, hope you found this video useful, and we'll see you again soon for more Music Tech Tuition.